Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. A major ransomware attack is impacting thousands of companies now, many of them small businesses. Cyber experts say a Russian-backed hacking group is responsible. ABC's Alex Prochet has details from Washington now in our top story at 5. It's already being called the single biggest global ransomware attack on record and its full scope is still unknown. This afternoon, cybersecurity experts are working feverishly to stem its impact. So far, thousands of victims affected in at least 17 countries. Experts say hackers attacked through firms that remotely manage IT infrastructures. The U.S.-based IT management company, Kasaya, chief among them. We just shut everything down. We've identified the issue. We're you know, patching it. Experts say at least a thousand companies that rely on Kasaya for remote IT services have been paralyzed, mostly small to medium sized businesses. In a joint statement, the FBI and Department of Homeland Security say they will reach out to identified victims to provide assistance based on an assessment of national risk. But the impact is well beyond the U.S. A Swedish grocery store chain reportedly had to close most of its 800 stores over the weekend because its cash registers were locked up in this attack. The FBI is urging companies affected to contact them, and Revil offered a universal decryptor software key for all affected machines in exchange for $70 million in cryptocurrency. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Here in Siouxland, two people are dead and another seriously injured after a one-vehicle crash west of Plankinton, South Dakota. It happened early on Sunday night. Preliminary investigation indicates that a Toyota Camry was eastbound on I-90 when that driver lost control. The vehicle went into the south ditch and rolled over. Both passengers, men ages 26 and 60, were not wearing seatbelts and were ejected. They were pronounced dead at that scene. The seatbelt use of the driver, a 19-year-old woman, under investigation. She did suffer serious non-life-threatening injuries. She was taken by ambulance to a hospital and then later airlifted to a Sioux Falls hospital. Charges are pending against her. The body of a 16-year-old Madison, Nebraska boy has been recovered from Lake Yankton. Around 3.20 on Sunday afternoon, the Cedar County Sheriff's Office got a 911 call of a boy drowning at the lake. It was determined the boy had tried to float across that lake from the swimming beach on an inflatable. Witnesses there reported when the boy tried to stand on that flotation device, he lost balance, fell off, and did not resurface. First responders from Nebraska and South Dakota were able to locate the body at roughly 8.30 at night. Search and rescue efforts included deploying boats equipped with side scan scanning sonar and deployment of drones. And we've learned the name tonight of the child killed in an accident on the Raging River ride at Adventureland Park over the weekend. Altoona police say 11-year-old Michael Jaramillo passed away from his injuries. He was one of four people injured after the raft overturned Saturday night. Police say another juvenile remains in critical condition today. The two others involved sustained minor injuries. Now, Altoona detectives are working with the state inspector and Adventureland on this investigation. Adventureland officials say the ride had just been inspected one day before the accident and was found to be in working order. Rescuers are searching through fresh rubble after the last collapsed condo building in Florida was demolished there in Surfside. Officials say that demolition did allow crews into previously inaccessible places. That includes bedrooms where people were believed to be sleeping at the time of the disaster. Three more victims were discovered in the new pile, raising the death toll to 27. Another 118 people remain unaccounted for. The demolition did raise the prospect that crews could increase both the pace of their work and the number of searchers at the site, although the chance of finding survivors 12 days after the June 24th collapse has greatly diminished. The 4th of July is not just a busy time for Siouxlanders, but also for Siouxland police officers. Sergeant Jeremy McClure with the Sioux City PD says their force conducted eight DUI arrests over this weekend. Those numbers are down from the nine last year. McClure says that he anticipated this weekend might be a little busier than last year's, but the numbers were roughly the same. The police department prepared for the weekend with officers who were specifically looking for people who might have been driving impaired. And if you heard fireworks late last night, you weren't the only one. There was a lot. The Sioux City Police Department answered a number of calls over the weekend for people shooting off fireworks after the ordinance allowed. 
and citations were issued. Again, Sergeant Jeremy McClure commenting, while this year's fourth was not as bad as in previous years, there was still a lot of reckless firework behavior going on. We're charged this weekend for discharging fireworks outside of the legal times and also for reckless use of fireworks. So there were some violations cited this weekend. Um, we know overall our numbers were trending down as compared to last year, but we still had a lot of complaints. McClure adds that it is illegal to shoot off fireworks after the 4th, so don't do it today. And people who are caught doing so will be receiving a citation. And it is beautiful weather out. The city of Sheldon, Iowa, back under a water watch. It's hot today there, too. Residents encouraged to conserve their water. That includes not filling up private pools right now, not washing streets or your driveways, and not watering lawns and gardens between 8 in the morning and 8.30 p.m. because those are, of course, the hottest hours of the day. It is time now for the official numbers because... Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, it felt like mid-90s, most places here in Siouxland today. Yeah, even the triple digits at times wow. today, Sophie. Really hot weather out there. Official high temperatures in the 90s throughout the Siouxland area. 97 the high this afternoon in Yankton. 96 Sioux Falls, 91 in Sioux City, 90 in Carroll. But when you factored in that humidity, again, it felt like it was above 100. We do have one severe thunderstorm warning to tell you about. That's in Hutchins up toward uh, Rosefield, South Dakota. That's in Turner and Hutchins. Hutchinson counties that last until 530. So there is the chance of seeing some small hail associated with that storm north of Yankton. We do have a better chance of seeing some more widespread storms happen tomorrow afternoon. More information in the 9 on 9 forecast. Sophie. All right, thanks, Scott. Well, the 4th of July weekend proved to be a busy one for Sioux City Animal Adoption and Rescue. Business manager there, Chris Wall, says they picked up 15 dogs and five cats on July 4th alone, and that fireworks were the culprit behind most of those rescues. While most of the animals have since been picked up, the ones that remain now have no form of ID, like tags or microchips. We'll hear from the director to find out exactly how you can better the safety of your pets on the holiday weekends coming up tonight at 6 and again at 10. Depending on where you live in Siouxland, you might still be allowed to shoot off fireworks, just not in Sioux City proper, but safety is still important even after the big shows. It is recommended to completely submerge fireworks in water overnight to ensure they won't start a fire. From there, the fireworks can be bagged and then taken to the trash or a landfill. Never put unsoaked fireworks in a garbage. They could potentially explode or catch fire in there. And by now, we're well into the summer months, and some have vacation plans made. But if you haven't yet, or you're looking for a weekend kind of drive, Roger Riley has some ideas for you in this week's Destination Iowa. Heading out west on Highway 30, you can see and take pictures of the Welcome to Boone train. Arriving in Jefferson, there's the landmark Mahaney Bell Tower. This bell tower was a gift from Floyd and Dora Mahaney. They left $350,000 to have a bell tower built on this location next to our Green County Courthouse and the Lincoln Highway. An elevator takes you up into the sky where you can see towns miles away. Also, you can spot rooftop art from here. Okay, this is called Arch Alley. I'm on a mission to uh, bring a third space to our downtown. Third spaces are spaces that really aren't gathering spaces. They're not workspaces. They're something completely different. Also, the beautiful Thomas Jefferson Gardens surround the Jefferson Chamber of Commerce building. Here in Manning, you can see the whole state of Iowa from one spot. Well, maybe not the whole state, but at least you can learn a lot about Iowa if you visit Trestle Park. There's the state bird, Eastern Goldfinch, the state rock, the geode, the state tree, which is the oak, and the state flower, the prairie rose. Also, Manning has an authentic German house barn and an old-time country church. Down the road in Audubon is Albert the Bull. Well, Albert the Bull came about back in the 60s because people wanted to honor the beef producers here in the area of Audubon County. And also, there weren't many tourist attractions to bring people off the interstates to see what's here in Audubon. The biggest seller probably is our miniature version of Albert. The kids love these, um, and the adults do too, but they're really popular with the kids. And um, we do have these fun Albert shirts that have him on the front and him on the back, if you know what I mean. Yeah, we love Albert and we hope everybody that comes to see Albert loves him too. Well, after a hot day and almost 90 degrees on this day wandering around West Central Iowa, it's a good day to stop for a little ice cream here at the Dairy Mart right on Highway 30 in Glidden.
Mm. Strawberry vanilla, swirl. Roger Riley, KCAU 9 News. That's just cruel. Now I want ice cream. Well, a teen is being called a hero the night after lightning struck her neighbor's home. How she was able to save his life coming up in about 10 minutes. And it remains very hot in Siouxland. We have that heat advisory out until 8 o'clock this evening. A slight cool down is coming our way, along with a few thunderstorm chances, too. Your 9 on 9 forecast up next. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. in the 80s with some more storm chances coming our way on Friday and Saturday. Looks like the weekend overall should be in okay shape once we get rid of the rain on Saturday afternoon and we'll have highs in the 80s to about 90 degrees going through next week. Well, here was one of those good destinations to be at for the 4th of July holiday weekend out at Lewis and Clark Park for an Explorers game. Thanks to our viewer for passing in that picture. Some good fireworks shows at those games too. Go to SiouxLandProud.com, go to the weather tab, send us your photos. All right, I love that. Baseball's my favorite sport. It's a lot of fun. Thanks a lot, Scott. Well, painting has begun downtown for a mural in remembrance of a man named Peter Johnson, the victim of a fatal assault back in 2018. Sioux City artist C.J. Phipps tells KCAU he wanted to commemorate Johnson's memory and has been communicating with the Johnsons and his wife to get the details just right. The mural was made possible thanks to local donations and can be found underneath the 6th Street Bridge if you're interested. Was your camera roll dominating the storage on your cell phone? We'll explore an affordable photo backup solution coming up in just a few minutes. But first, a late flight back home turned out to be a blessing in disguise. How a teen was able to spring into action when lightning struck and started a neighbor's house on fire. Next. A teenager is being hailed a hero by her neighbors after she witnessed a house in her neighborhood burning early on Friday morning from lightning. She raced over to wake up the neighbor just in time. Alex Love spoke with her about the incident. Surveillance footage from the back porch of the Marlin home captured the moment their neighbor's house on Sunningdale Rise was struck by a bolt of lightning over the garage. The very storm keeping Isabella's flight from landing on time. If your flight had been on time, would you have still been up this late? Um, probably not. I probably would have been asleep knowing I was, how tired I was and how late it was. The fire spread above the roof by 1.20 a.m. as Isabella was upstairs unpacking making the inconvenience of getting home a blessing in disguise. I was complaining about that, but it's like if that didn't happen, I probably wouldn't have been able to save him because I know everyone else like near him was sleeping because we had to wake everyone else up. After getting her parents to call 911, Isabella raced through her backyard, not wearing any shoes, cutting through three more yards in order to reach the burning Sunning Rise home. She walked us through how she did it. I ran through one of my neighbor's yards and then out through the front to get there because I know there's a fence in the back. And then I just kind of started knocking on his door. I was like, hey, you need to get out. He was kind of like half asleep. I feel like it didn't register to him either that there was a fire at first. The owner of the home, Brian Sidney Smith, was unavailable to talk, but gave us this statement praising Isabella's actions, saying, quote, Isabella saved my life by noticing the fire and taking the initiative to come running to my house. She knocked on my door until I got out. I consider her my hero and am so thankful to her my caring neighbors, and the brave firefighters who worked so hard to put the fire out. Amazing. Well, photo and video storage we know can be very expensive between external hard drives and subscription service backups. But is $10 a year service too good to be true? We'll find out next. The new project's approval means I-29 is going to be closed again. Hey, did you hear about this? Take our award-winning news team wherever you go with the KCAU 9 app. One of the most important things you can do, of course, we know is to back up your phone, especially those irreplaceable photos and videos. But these days, everybody wants to charge you so much to do it. Now, one app sees an opportunity to offer unlimited storage. Rich Jamiro explains. We're using our smartphone cameras so much these days. These are your memories of your life. So, so you really want to save these things. But what happens if you lose your phone or forget to back it up? All those precious memories are gone. Backup is, is very important. It's like insurance. Now a company named iDrive sees an opportunity to help folks back up photos and videos on their phone for just $10 a year. iDrive has been around for two decades. It's, we, are, we are a leader in the backup segment. We have one PC magazine, Editor's Choice, seven years in a row. 
and uh, we, we, are, we are rated best by many publications. iDrive is well known for helping individuals and businesses back up. Their new app is called iDrive Photos. It will back up photos and videos from your phone in their original resolution with unlimited storage. Is there a catch to this? No, there is no catch. This is, uh, this is just pure we, we offer pure backup, that, that's our strength. Keep in mind, the app is backing up your photos and videos in their original resolution. And even though it's unlimited, at any time you can go into settings and see exactly how much space you're using. Sign up through the website and get your first year for just a dollar. iDrive Photos is basic and not a complete replacement for Google Photos and similar apps, since it doesn't help you organize, edit, or search your pictures. But I like how it's fast and easy for backups. Plus, there's a feature that lets you instantly restore your backed up photos to a new phone. What about privacy? Because people always wonder, are you using my photos for anything? No, no. So there is nothing that is, uh, your data is not used for any, any purposes. So. Uh, our, our primary business is backing up and restoring. That's all we do. We take a live look outside right now on a sunny night. Scott returns with one more check on your forecast. So stay with us. Welcome back. Want to make you aware of a severe thunderstorm warning that's in effect for Hutchinson and Turner counties in southeast South Dakota. That lasts until 545 this afternoon. This storm has weakened quite a bit in the last couple of scans, but again, north of Yankton, we do have that one strong storm in the area. Possibility of an isolated storm or two carrying on into the evening hours here and some more storms for tomorrow afternoon linking up with a cold front quite a bit cooler on Wednesday with a high of just 80. Looking just good. Just 80. How about it? Thanks, Scott. Thank you for joining us. We'll both see you again at six and until then have a great night everyone thanks for watching